लेडीज एंड जेलमैन नमस्ते आदा गुड इवनिंग लास्ट डे द टॉपिक टूडे इज सबकॉन्शियस माइंड एंड सक्सेस टूडे आई एम गोन टू टेक यू थ्रू अ जर्नी एज टू वॉट मेक्स इज वॉट वी आर आई यू ब्रीफ इंट्रो टू वॉट द डिस्कवरी अबाउट हाउ द सबकॉन्शियस वॉज डिस्कवर्ड वॉट इज इट वॉट डज इट डू what can we do with it we'll also talk about what makes success and how people are successful and what makes a successful personality so let me take you through an exciting journey right from time immemorial ladies and gentlemen let me take you back in time in the olden times when somebody was sick he was brought to the witch doctor there was a fire burning in the middle of the ground people started dancing around it chanting they were beating up drums and the person who was sick went into a trance like state when he came out he was healed as time progressed the practices became more sophisticated they started using magnet in order to heal people because during that time the properties of magnet were not fully understood it attracted certain objects and people believed it to be a piece of moon and while all this was happening in different countries it was done in different ways in india we had meditative practices for putting people into trance in some countries they swirl around and dance and got into trance somewhere it was by beating somewhere it was by chanting all processes to take you in a trance like state in order to heal you or in order to make you well medicine or the science of medicine was nowhere in sight as time progressed a doctor was born in europe in vienna his name was franz anton mesmer mesmer studied medicine philosophy he was also influenced by this theory of animal magnetism that a magnet attracts certain peop objects and makes people go into certain states and you can heal people with magnet he started utilizing magnet in his practices and magnetism or animal magnetism came to be known as mesmerism the concept was there was some sort of a invisible fluid in and around our bodies and by when there was an imbalance of this fluid people got into disease and if you think about the word disease is this ease your body is not at ease with itself Mesmer's practices were questioned in Vienna. Medical association there declared him to be fraud. He left Vienna, he came to Paris. He set up his practice again, started working, and the hunter king Louis XVI of the France, he also appointed a committee to investigate Mesmer. Another committee was appointed. Some of the members on the committee who examined Mesmer, Dr. Benjamin Franklin, Mr Gillet in the man who devised the way of chopping people's heads off Mr Lavoisier the chemist of the time in whose name there is a mouthwash in America all these people were on the committee who investigated Mesmer he was never called to answer the charges against him again his theories since they couldn't prove it they declared that they were invalid Mesmer wandered around Europe saying that something that he had pioneered will continue throughout centuries and today you find magnetic bracelets if you go to department stores for arthritic pain you find magnetic bed also pedic surgery it has been found that use of magnet makes the healing much better but to continue with the history after mesmer lot of people continued this research there was one doctor in india dr james isdell was working in bengal in a prison hospital at that time chloroform was not discovered it came this chloroform was discovered in the middle of 19th century dr isdell without the use of any anesthetics performed 300 major operations by the use of what was known as mesmerism putting the person into trance and relieving of the pain the british medical journal lancet wrote an article such imposter should be hooted out of their practice and they should be without a patient for the rest of their life Dr Isdale wrote back there were all my patients are hysterical 
They should be investigated as an epidemic of hysteria near Calcutta. Again, the practice is continued. And came a doctor by the name of Dr. James Braid from Scotland. He went to witness a demonstration of mesmerism. Animal magnetism at that time has become synonymous with mesmerism. Dr. James Braid watched this demonstration and he realized the trance state was real. Maybe the theory that explained it was not. He came back to his clinic, started mesmerizing his patients without the use of magnet. He succeeded. The word came, hypnosis, 1841-42. The word hypnosis comes from Hypnosis, in, hypnosis comes from the word Greek word hypnosis meaning sleep. Hypnosis is a Greek god of sleep. From that the word came. And hypnosis became one word that everybody knew. My mother who had third grade education, one word in English language she knew was hypnosis. And most of the time it had wrong connotation. As it continued, there was one doctor in France, Nancy France. Dr. Lebo, he started working with patients with mental disorders. Ladies and gentlemen, mental disorders could be broadly classified into two categories, neurotic and psychotic. The difference is the person who is suffering from psychotic disorders, their perception of reality is different than ours. We just supposedly live in an objective reality, they live in their subjective reality, which means if you go to a Bombay hospital right here, you'll find people who believe that they are Jesus Christ or Virgin Mary or Mahatma Gandhi. I told you that one example yesterday, Prime Minister Nehru went to Thana Mental Institute and uh, one of the inmates asked him, who are you? He said, I am Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru. He said, I used to believe the same thing, you know, you will be alright, you know. So this is, they live in their own reality, this is a psychotic, neurotic, all of you could be neurotic, if you have a habit of checking the door whether you locked it or not. Every time you go out there, you come back and check it again, then you walk out and it's called obsessive compulsive neurosis. Otherwise you function, you function quite well. So Dr. Lebo was working with patients suffering from neurosis. Using hypnosis, he succeeded quite well. Another doctor at that time in France, Dr. Charcot, also was working with patients with hypnosis. And Charcot had a very famous student, one of the most famous people of last century, Dr. Sigmund Freud. When Dr. Freud witnessed the demonstration, he got interested in hypnosis. He came back and started working with his patients, but he did not succeed well. As a result, he continued analyzing himself and came up with a process of therapy known as psychoanalysis. Freud came up with a theory of the mind, and this is the first time we have a systematic theory of the mind. He says the mind as the unconscious, which is the hidden part. Everything we don't remember, but any traumatic events or anything that had emotional impact in our life is stored into that part of the mind. And so it's a dark region of our existence. That is our unconscious mind. Conscious mind is the one that everything that we remember consciously, in between there is pre-conscious, half remembered, sort of on the periphery of the conscious and on the unconscious. Freud worked with his patients. The idea was he, to find out what caused the problem. And he got this idea from one of the contemporary doctors, Dr. Joseph Brewer. Dr. Brewer had a very famous patient who made history. Generally, doctors make history. In this case, the patient made history. Dr. Brewer had a patient. Her name was Anna O. Fictitious name. Her real name was Bertha Papenheim. This lady had a lot of problems. One of the problems was half her body was paralyzed. Dr. Brewer was called to treat her for paralysis. When he went there, he checked her out and he found out there was nothing wrong with physically. He found out by questioning her as to how the paralysis first came. This Bertha Papenheim's father was suffering from tuberculosis. Her job was to take care of her father at night while her mother took care of her husband during the daytime. One time, while she was supposed to take care of her father at night, that's the time her father died. And that was the, also the time for the onset of the paralysis. 